Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the Buzzweaver channel. That includes things like current events, headlines that are in the news, pop culture, social media, technology, and items of interest that come up during the week that allow us to have a little bit of a dialogue. I want to thank all of you guys on Odyssey, BitChute, Rumble, DTube, and of course all my followers here on YouTube as we go into 2022. Hitting that like and commenting below and of course subscribing. All of that helps the channel across all the networks and platforms. I want to thank all of you guys for your continued support. All right, guys, so we start things off from ground news. Burks to testify publicly in Congress about Trump pandemic response. Deborah Burks, who served as COVID response coordinator under former President Donald Trump, will give her first public testimony about her time in the Trump administration, NBC News reports. Of course, you guys can see a theme here or a reoccurring theme where the Democrats are pulling all the stops because it is the midterm season. And as we've talked about here on the channel, the Democrats enjoy their authoritarianism. They like people to see that they're in a position of power, and they like to exert this power specifically against their political enemies. And as we see here, this is going to be relating to the pandemic response, of course. Of course, they want to raise uh, uncertainty. They want to undermine the president. They want to make him look as bad as possible because that's what they did for four years, and that was smear him. But they're not done with just that theme, because as you see here, the January 6th panel to seek testimony from Gina Thomas. Virginia Thomas, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, will be interviewed. Thomas, a conservative activist, communicated with people in President Donald Trump's orbit ahead of the attack and on the day of the insurrection. Investigators discovered information that refers to Thomas as Gina in communications that have obtained relating to one of Trump's lawyers. So... As you can see here, here's the theme, right? So we moved from the pandemic, and now we're moving to Clarence Thomas, Supreme Court Justice. And as you know, of course, the big major leak, the first time in the history of the Supreme Court and the first time in the history of the United States where information was leaked about a potential case that is being reviewed right now by the Supreme Court Justice. But, of course, we are in the midterms, so these themes continue. As we see here from Deadline, January 6th committee hearing Attorney General William Barr says that Donald Trump seemed detached from reality in advancing false election narratives so or claims. So here we have a continuing thing. We move from pandemic to Clarence Thomas, Supreme Court, and now we're moving to uh, Trump's uh, mental state or his desperation, as it was, as they try to illustrate here, of course, of false election claims. But as you guys know, because you've been a follower here on the channel, you guys know that even in Pennsylvania, they violated their own constitution for these mail-in ballots. And, of course, the pandemic just happened to be a lightning bolt from the sky to help out the Democrats for their cause. And that was really what they do here, as you see now, is create chaos, confusion, and disorder. And that's why I here on the channel do try to interpret all of this for you guys to get you through the confusion, the difficulty, and the tumult. I hope I didn't give myself too much credit there, but I was on a roll, so I just had to go with it. But nonetheless, so here we see, you know, former Attorney General William Barr, who is not in that picture. That's a Fox News guy, former Fox News political editor. So former Attorney General William Barr has been in the spotlight in this hearing as the community has run extensive video of his testimony in which he talked on how he thought Donald Trump may have been detached from reality as he began to embrace conspiracies about the election. So again here, just more smear tactics against Donald Trump. William Barr is, is pretty much a straightforward kind of guy, so he's just doing his job. Maybe you could call him a status quo politician because they all are in a club. And Donald Trump is kind of a bit of an outsider. He's more of a populist. People have to remember that he is a New York Democrat, so it's not like he shares a lot of really big Republican right-leaning ideologies or philosophies. Plus, Donald Trump knows all the skeletons in the closet as well as this pattern that I am unfolding before you guys to reveal, of course, how the Democrats operate and the things that they like to do, which is attack their political enemies. As we see here, January 6th committee opens the latest hearings with focus on how Donald Trump pressured and turned the mob. So now we're moving from the pandemic to Clarence Thomas to the attorney general's uh, President Trump's mental state, and now how he controlled the mob. 
Now, if you guys have been following the channel, you guys are very astute, very aware that first the FBI said they found scant evidence as it was any coordinated effort. And then, of course, the biggest deal that was made by the Senate, and that was also what began all of these committee hearings, and that was when they acquitted President Trump of any involvement in inciting the January 6th riot. So, again, the emphasis here being... The Democrats, the mainstream media, the Trump detractors aren't going to explain to anyone that these are simply hearings. These, these aren't trials. These don't follow the same rules as an actual trial that you would see in a courtroom or even the proceedings and processes that are done by the Supreme Court. So these are their opportunity, the Democrats' opportunity, to seize on this during the midterm. Now, they took a break on Wednesday because they were anticipating news from the Supreme Court, who are reviewing several things to include, of course, that dealing with uh, Roe versus Wade and whether or not it'll be turned over and handed over to the states. But in some interesting, curious news as to whether or not any of this is working, we see Republican Mayra Flores has won the special election for Texas 34th Congressional District, flipping a seat that has been under has been under nearly unbroken Democratic control for decades, and that is correct. As a matter of fact, I saw some of the data that Tim Pool had created, so I kind of give credit to Tim Pool for having mentioned this. I don't usually keep up with these sorts of local smaller races or special elections because, of course, she still has to go – she still has to compete with uh, her competitors in November. So it could be that Republicans are just out very strong right now, but it could also indicate that independent people who typically don't answer a lot of the polling or – get too actively involved in being part of any of the parties. They kind of want to just do their thing and uh, hope that who they vote for will work out for them. But nonetheless, uh, it was really amazing because she is a Mexican-born immigrant. She, she immigrated to the United States. She became a representative. She's a Republican, which is even more interesting because this district, as uh, Tim did show in Wiki, was just hugely Democrat, which is, of course, understandable. But I'm glad that she was able to win it, at least you know, at least the, the special election. We'll see how things turn out in November. But the theme here, of course, is they went after Trump for the pandemic. Then, of course, they went after Clarence Thomas, which was part of their you know, Supreme Court justice stuff. Of course, you know all of the, the protesting and stuff that was going outside of Kavanaugh's home, as well as uh, Chief Justice John Roberts. And then, of course, you know, they had to bring in a Fox News person and, of course, William Barr, former attorney, to make it seem as though Trump was losing his mind. And then, of course, uh, having turned the mob or Trump inciting the violence, which we already know has been proven that he did not do by the very same people that are engaged in this hearing. So I found it very curious that this is a continuing theme, but not totally mysterious because it is the midterms. And that's what I have for you guys this Friday. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this Friday vlog. Thank you for the likes, the shares, and the comments. Believe it or not, they really do contribute to the engagement here in 2022 as we show the YouTube AI that conservative commentary is welcome here on the channel. So thank you guys for all that support. And, of course, all you guys on New Tech. Below this video, you can find the various social media links that I belong to to include... Instagram and TikTok, which I am now uploading the Friday vlogs to directly now as they've extended it up to 10 minutes. So you guys can check it out there if you want to. It's up to you. So I do appreciate all the support. Appearing there on the screen, that would be the channel icon for YouTube. Those of you watching it here, you guys can click on that to subscribe as well as uh, notifications if you guys want to be notified. And I try to reduce some of the, uh, some of the dailies or the shorts so that you guys aren't getting as much of the notifications. So I want to thank all of you guys for your continued support and I'll see all of you right there behind that camera next Friday.